So anyway, on sharpening, there's two ways you can do it. You can use this steel device, which works really good. It cuts all the, it cuts the top off of your guide tooth, which is this tooth right here. See this tooth? Mm -hmm. So what happens is this tooth, in reference to that, lets the saw chain cut a certain depth. You can see right there, see that? So that's how thick your chip's gonna be. If you cut this too low, then it takes a big chip and it's hard on the saw. If you have a super powerful saw like this 500, it still cuts through it. And this 440 will too. But if you can see here, the difference in this chain, see how low that tooth is cut compared to this one? Yeah. This tooth is older and has been filed back more, so you have to take this down because that tooth is at an angle. See how it's at an angle? Yeah. So as you sharpen back, the angle gets less uh, steep, so you have to come back and cut that off. All right, so this tool right here, you set it on here and you follow the angle. There's an angle mark right there. See that? And so when you put this on, sometimes you gotta, sometimes it gets me goofed up. So I got it backwards, I gotta go that way. So what you want is, if you'll notice, right here, the round file is sitting in the tooth right here. And this flat file right here is sitting on here. So when you go with this one, you keep the angle right there on the tooth and you just hold it down and file like this. But what you got to do is you got to make sure you do the number the same on every tooth. Like, like count the number of strokes. Right. So if I do three on this one, I need to do three on all of them. And see, it's barely cutting the top of that down and it's getting the angle right. Mm -hmm. And that does good because the reason you got to do all of them the same is because if you do one tooth, one extra stroke, it may cut more than the others. So the chain kind of does a, a jump. Or if you do more strokes on one tooth, because these tooth go two different ways, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go this way and file all these, and then I'm gonna turn the saw around to the other side. Well, if I do three on this side and four on that side, when you go to cut through a log, it has a tendency to cut. Instead of cutting straight down, it's gonna do a, a bow effect. That's extreme, but it does happen. So the meat that I'm filing under here is like underneath your finger, which holds your nail and gives your nail its strength, right? Yeah. So the metal that I'm filing off is the metal that holds the chrome on there, and then I'm just cutting the edge of the chrome. It's, it's like a razor blade. It really is. I mean, just, just the engineering behind a chainsaw chain is pretty incredible, and honestly, it, it's changed some over the years, but if you look at the old chains from the old Poulin and home light saws, professional saws back in the day, this chain's about the same. There's material changes, I'm sure. So I go back and just take one little shot off the top of those. You see that little tooth is in the wood, right? Mm -hmm. So it lets the chain not dig any deeper than that height right there, because in the kerf, it's sitting on the wood. So that's your chip thickness. If I file that way down, then the thick the chip's gonna be really thick, but then the saw has a tendency to, to bite too much and then it wants to kick up. So that's what kick kickback is. If the chain jumps in the wood, the saw kicks up. And back in the days when they didn't have the brake on there, people would get cut in the face because it it jumps up faster than you can blink. And that's how he got it. Yeah. Okay, so, let me see here. This is a trick that most homeowners or people that don't really do much cutting don't realize about a chainsaw chain. All right, so take your finger and rub it right there. See how the dirt's catching on it? Yeah, it's got a burr on it. Okay, that's from the chain running on it, and this, this bar is very old been used a lot so as the chain runs down it it's like when you sharpen with a file you know you leave that little lip that's tipped over 
So that's what you have right there, is the chain's rubbing on here and it's making that metal fold out on each side. And it's small, right? Yeah. Here's the problem. When you put the chain on here, that lip is wider than the chain. So if I put the chain on here, like this, you can run your finger through there and you feel that the lip is right at the edge of the chain or it's maybe, a, this one's not super bad, but it's right at the edge of the chain. So what's the problem with that? Well, when you go to cut through a tree or if you're cutting, just say you're cutting down a tree or you're cutting a log that's in a little bit of a pinch, that lip on the bar acts like a wedge. It gets down in there and it's stuck in the kerf and the chain can no longer cut because the widest part is that bar. So it gets hung and it'll also get hung in the tree really easy. <clears throat> the other thing you gotta check is if the chain moves a lot, which this one's moving a pretty good bit right here, that means this little slot or this trench that the chain runs in is worn and probably should get a new bar. But since we cut firewood with this out in the woods and cut stuff, we're just gonna run it like this. Um, but to fix that, and you, you really need to do it pretty regular, you need to take the file and take your bar and lay it down as flat as you can and file like this. You see that lip right there? See how much lip I'm taking off? Cause I got it flat along the bar. Bulldog taught me that. He pulp wood all the time. He said, man, you can't let that lip get on your bar. You're gonna be fighting that saw all day. And that's all they did for 10 hours of chainsaw pulp wood back in the 70s and 80s. All right, so the chainsaw chain, there's oil in the reservoir and the oil goes in this track right here. All right, so if you look right here, see this little hole? This is your oil tube. See that, Terrell? This is your oil tube right here. Okay. See the junk that's coming out? Mm -hmm. if, when you ever, you mess with your chainsaw, you need to make sure that's clear right there because there's a little port and of course this one's filthy, but there's a port where the oil comes out and gets onto your bar. So when your bar's on here, your oil comes out right there, I think, on this one. So you need to make sure at all times that these little slots, mm -hmm. which comes up here to the top, make sure that it's clean. Mm -hmm. and there's one on the other side for when you flip the bar, make sure it's clean. New money. See this little slide right here? Mm -hmm. That moves with this. See how it's coming back? I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, see how it's sliding back this way? Yeah. Okay, so when I put the bar on, which I changed change, remember, so it's not gonna work where it was. All right, to hold the chain. Go down against the saw. Yes. To lock. Mm -hmm. There it is. All right, so it locked in that slot. Put your chain on the top. Too tight? Yeah. Too tight? I think so. Yeah. All right, so what we do, no, it's loose as heck, see? Okay, see how many are up right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, what we do is, when you pull it, I want five teeth showing. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, almost 13. So what I gotta do, loosen these up just a little bit and then tighten it up. Some guys have a precision way of doing it. Uh, I guess everybody kind of has their own idea about it. That's what I was taught years ago and it seems to work good. Some guys run them really loose. It, it's just whatever. I'm sure there's an exact way that still wants you to do it, that they've tested forever. Yeah. Did you check good. it? Did you pull it up? Yeah, it's good. All right, so now we're gonna pull it up and I'm holding it up. That's a little tight. I got one, two, three, four, five, something like that. This is, 
This is probably more like four. I'm not pulling real hard, but it's real tight. But here's the thing, that's a brand new chain. When it gets a little hot, it's gonna stretch for the first time. And after that, it probably won't stretch anymore. So you put a new chain on, you wanna run it a little bit tight. And then get these nice and snug. Make sure everything's good. Make sure it still runs smooth. And it's gonna be tight the first time. The only thing about these cans, they make a little funnel. Be nice to have. Be nice, just put it for potty. What a mess. It's honey, baby. Look at that honey. Woo! That's good for a thick case. Hey! Mm -hmm. You can Hmm. Cold coffee with sawdust. That's good stuff. Getting throw fire. Mm -mm. Throw real hot. Mm-mm. Mm-mm.